Today, we have a really interesting project. One of the biggest hurdles for AI agents is actually how to test them, how to know if they're doing things correctly. And that's really the only way for them to improve. But today, there's not really a way to do it consistently and thoroughly until now. A new project called OS World aims to fix the benchmarking problem for AI agents. And it's not only a research paper, they also release the code, they release the data as well. Basically everything is open source and I really appreciate that. So we're gonna talk about it today. I'm gonna tell you all about it and it's super interesting. So let's get into it. So first, here's the research paper. OS World Benchmarking Multimodal Agents for Open-Ended Tasks in Real Computer Environments. And it's out of the University of Hong Kong, CMU, Salesforce Research, and University of Waterloo. And the project actually comes with a presentation, which I think did a fantastic job of explaining what is going on. So I'll show you that in a minute. But the gist is, to date, we haven't had a great way to benchmark AI agents, to allow them to perform actions in an environment and actually test and get the results of how well they're performing. And that's what OS World aims to fix. It gives agents a robust environment, multiple operating systems, a way to interact with the environment, and a way to actually measure the performance. So first, let's go over the slides because because this is such a great presentation, I think it sums it up really well. So this is by Tao Yu out of the University of Hong Kong, just came out a few weeks ago. So the first page shows IKEA furniture assembly, and it's trying to set up an analogy for how humans take instructions and actually execute those instructions. So on the left, we have IKEA assembly instructions, and then on the right, we have the assembled chair. But what happens in between those two things? First, on the left, we have those step-by-step -step plans, but that's not enough. That's not actually enough. Just having the step-by-step -step plans is not enough to go assemble a chair. We need grounding. We need to actually know how to take those step-by-step -step instructions and execute them. And that execution step, which also includes getting feedback and perceiving the world, and in this example, perceiving the different steps of building the chair, are incredibly important for actually executing the task successfully. And here they're calling that the grounding. So now let's look at a digital task. We have computer tasks in a digital world, task instruction. How do I change my Mac desktop background? So we have the Mac OS environment. We have our control instructions, which is basically just from the help on the Apple website. And then we have the final outcome of Mac OS with new wallpaper. But again, how do we get from just the instructions to the final executed task. We need grounding. And grounding in this case comes in the form of a mouse and keyboard. Now it's already difficult just based on that. To date, I believe Open Interpreter is probably the best at taking instructions and being able to actually control the computer. And it's really difficult to do so because you know Mac is a closed system, Windows is a closed system. And so basically what they do is they typically take a screenshot of the entire desktop, then they put a grid over it, and then the large language model tells the mouse and keyboard where to move on that grid. But it's all done through accessibility features and and it's imprecise to say the least. So it's really a very inefficient way of controlling a computer. And let's see what's next. So can LLMs and VLMs be used for these tasks? So the answer is yes and no, according to this presentation. So let's ask ChatGPT on the left side, how do I change my Mac desktop background? And ChatGPT gives us perfect instructions. So step-by-step -step instructions. And then for real world tasks, it can't really help with an Ikea chair, right? Because you ask it, how do I assemble an Ikea chair? And it gives you only the most high level information about how to do that. So let's look at the yes. Let's look at how to actually execute digital instructions. So again, on the left, we have the step-by-step -step instructions on how to change the Mac desktop background. And what we need is control instructions. How do I take the actual step-by-step -step instructions and control the computer? And that grounding is the missing piece 
because there is no really cut and dry way to control a Mac desktop. For example, again, it's usually take a screenshot, place a grid over it, and try to guess what the coordinates are. Very imprecise. And it says right here, ChatGPT cannot execute tasks on your Mac by grounding plans into actions. And as the second example, the real world example, ChatGPT also cannot generate step-by-step -step plans without interacting in the environment. So basically without getting that feedback, and how's it gonna get feedback? feedback from the real world environment without a lot of sensors, which we don't really have right now, then it's not actually able to go give you really solid instructions for how to do it. Now, before we get to the solution, this presentation talks about what are actual agents. So we have a user over here, the user gives an instruction, the LLM as an agent is able to code actions, it has a bunch of actions it can do and it's basically able to code it. So here we have SQL, we have API calls, we have web and app control, so actually being able to control the desktop, and even an embodied AI in the form of a robot. So we can actually use large language models to generate code that controls a robot. Then we have the environment, and that is like the Mac OS or Windows, but we have more than that. We have the data, we have websites, we have apps, we have mobile desktop, and we have the physical world, all the different environments that we should be able to operate within. Then we need to be able to gather observations and place those back into the large language model because this is going to be an iterative loop. It needs to plan, it needs to perform, and then it needs to observe and use that information to iterate once again. And then of course we have whatever tools we wanna to use, Hugging Face, SQL, Python, etc. So here they say, what is an intelligent agent? and I've never actually heard that term before, but let's take a look at what it says. So the definition is an intelligent agent perceives its environment via sensors and acts rationally upon that environment with its effectors. A discrete agent receives percepts one at a time and maps this percept sequence to a sequence of discrete actions. So let's take a look at this little funny looking chart that they have here. We have the agent. The agent can gather input through sensors in the form of percepts. Then it can plan and actually perform actions via its effectors, things that can actually affect the environment. So the properties of an intelligent agent are it's autonomous, it's reactive to the environment, it's proactive, goal-directed, and it interacts with other agents via the environment. So this is all really cool. And I keep thinking back to Crew AI and Autogen and other AI agent frameworks because this feels very akin to that. So let's look at some examples of what this can be. The environment can be a computer, mobile data, or the physical world if you're using an embodied AI agent. Then for the sensors, we can use camera, screenshot, ultrasonic, radar. And now I'm kind of thinking of Tesla autonomous vehicles acting as agents. Then we have the agent itself where the LLM slash VLM is the brain and the effectors. So that's the robot or the interpreter. So here's an example of a robotic physical world agent. So we give the instructions, stack the blocks on the empty bowl. We have the code right here. So block name, detect blocks, detect objects, and basically stack them up. This is all the code necessary to do that. That is in the actions. So here are all the different options for the actions independent of the environment that we're working within. And here's again, the basic workflow. So we've already talked about this, but it also says we have to be able to interpret abstract user instructions, utilize tools and expand capacities, explore complex unseen environments, multi-step planning and reasoning, and follow feedback and self debug. These are all part of being an agent, all stuff that we've already seen. And so it seems one of their big innovations is this xlang, which basically takes natural language instructions and translates that into code that can be executed in an environment. And so here's the xlang website. You can see very similar to what we've been seeing already. And here's the xlang GitHub page where you can get the Open Agents Project, as well as OS World. And these are all open source, which is awesome. Thanks to the sponsor of this video, Deep Checks. Deep Checks helps teams building LLM applications evaluate, monitor, and debug their LLM-based applications. With Deep Checks, you can release high-quality LLM apps quickly without compromising on testing. Imagine building a rag-based chatbot application. You do not want it to hallucinate or have inaccuracies. Hallucinations, incorrect answers, bias, deviations from policy, harmful content, and more need to be detected, explored, and mitigated before and after your app goes live. 
easily compare versions of your prompts and models to pen test your LLM based app for undesired behavior to enhance their text annotation efforts with automated scoring or to monitor the actual quality of your LLM based app in production. It allows you to create custom properties and rules to evaluate your LLM applications based on your requirements. DeepCheck supports RAG, chatbots, Q&A, summarization, text-to-SQL, text-to-code, and other content generation. DeepCheck's LLM evaluation solution is currently available for free trials. If you're building any kind of LLM-based application, you should definitely check out DeepCheck's. I'll drop the link in the description below so you can get your free trial. Thanks again to DeepCheck's, and now back to the video. So they've actually published a bunch of work and projects recently. They have Instructor, which is uh, adapting to various agent environments by simply providing instructions. Binder, which is one of the first LLM plus tool use studies. Lemur, open state-of-the-art LLMs for language agents, open agents, an open platform for language agents in the wild. This is an agents project that I actually haven't tested yet. I have not even heard of it before reading about it here. We have text to reward, which connects the large language model agents to the physical world, and then OS world, which is what we're talking about today. Okay, so that's enough theory. Let's actually talk about how it's working. So here's an example. So I zoomed in and we have computer tasks often involve multiple apps and interfaces. So the instruction example that is given here, update the bookkeeping sheet with my recent transactions over the past few days in the provided folder. I am so blown away that if not today, eventually, and pretty soon I believe, agents are gonna be able to take complex task instructions like this and actually go execute them on our behalf. That's why I'm excited about Agent Frameworks. That's why I'm excited about the Rabbit device. Hopefully you're seeing the potential of agents. So in this example, we have the operating system right here. They need to open up Office. They actually need to open up different images which contain receipts. And then they need to read the image look for the different line items, the different prices, and input those into the spreadsheet. This is very complex. But how do agents actually do that? It is incredibly difficult to do that in the macOS environment, in Windows environments, because there's no grounding layer. There's no ability to take those instructions and actually generate the instructions to interact with the environment. And so that's where OS World comes in, which is the first scalable real computer environment. OS World can serve as a unified multimodal agent environment for evaluating open-ended computer tasks that involve arbitrary apps and interfaces across operating systems. So within this environment, they can operate any of the operating systems, they can operate any amount of applications within that, and they can even operate the interfaces themselves, both the UI and the CLI. And it's able to provide observations to the agents. The agents are able to to use grounding to actually generate instructions for how to interact with the computer environment. So let's look at what an agent task includes. An autonomous agent task can be formalized as a primarily observable Markov decision process. So we have the state space, so the current desktop environment. We have the observation space, which is the instruction, the screenshot, the ally tree, which I'll show you in a minute. And then we have the action space, what they can actually do, so being able to click. Then we have the transition function and the reward function. So when each task is generated, we have this initial state that's located in this task config. So here's the instructions right here. We have the config, which is the current state. We have the evaluator. So basically, how do we tell if the task is completed or not? We have the result compared to the expected. And then we have the function with different options. So how does it actually get the observations? Well, there's really a few ways that they describe here. We have the set of marks and the accessibility tree. The set of marks is kind of like a grid format. It basically just tells it how to click on different objects within the screen. And this is very akin to how Open Interpreter works today. It basically has a grid and it decides where to click. Now, rather than figuring out what the grid is and figuring out where each button is within the grid, that is the point of OS world. It is actually telling the language model where everything is. And then we have the accessibility tree, which is basically a code version of that. So the AI agent generates an action, which results in a new state, and then a new observation. So here's an example of the actual interaction with the environment. We have 
the mouse moving, we have clicking, we have writing text, we have pressing the keyboard, we have using hotkeys, scrolling, dragging, key up, key down, waiting, failing, done. So that is how it actually interacts with the environment. So how are the task executions actually evaluated? And that's what we're seeing here. So we have the task instruction as an example, we have this initial state. Can you help me clean my computer by getting rid of all the tracking things that Amazon might have saved? So the evaluation script, which I guess is just a simplified version, an example version of it, is it actually checks. It grabs the cookies and sees, does amazon.com have any cookies left? And if not, it passed, and if so, it failed. Then over here, we have rename sheet one to Lars resources, then make a copy of it, place the copy before sheet two, rename it by appending, et cetera, et cetera, and again, it's simply checking whether it was done or not. So this is a great way to benchmark in a really accurate way. So they created 369 real world computer tasks that involve real web and desktop apps in open domains. They use OS file reading and writing. They do multi-app workflows through both the GUI and the command line. And each example task are carefully annotated with real world task instructions from real users, an initial state setup config to simulate human work in progress, and a custom execution-based evaluation script. So let's actually look at the prompt. This is what the actual prompt looks like. So they tested it against COG agent, which I had not heard of, GPT-4, Gemini Pro, Claude 3 as agents. Then we have the prompt details, which we're seeing over here. So you're an agent, which follow my instructions and perform desktop computer tasks as instructed. You have good knowledge, et cetera, et cetera. You are required to use Pi Auto GUI to perform the action grounded to the observation. Return one line or multiple lines of Python code to perform each of the actions. You need to specify the coordinates of by yourself based on the observation of the current observation. And here's a password you can use. So uh, really just a pretty thorough prompt to give to the large language model. The temperature of one, which I thought was interesting because that means that it's going to be the most creative basically and a top P of 0.9. Now, I would think it would want to keep the temperature really low. Uh, I'm not actually sure why they decided to keep the temperature at one. And then they also provide the most recent three observations and actions as history context for each step, basically helping the large language model understand what has come before, and that will inform what it needs to do going forward. And as input settings, as we've already talked about, they have set of marks and accessibility tree, and they actually have four different versions of it. They have accessibility tree only, screenshot only, screenshot plus accessibility tree, and set of marks. Now let's look at the results. So on the left, we have the different input modes. So the ally tree, which is the accessibility tree, we have the screenshot, we have the accessibility tree plus screenshot, and then the set of marks. So what we have found is, first of all, GPT-4 across the board has been the winner. The only exception is with screenshot only mode, which in Gemini Pro V, did the best. And it seems that either the accessibility tree or using a screenshot plus the accessibility tree are giving the best result with really the accessibility tree alone being really the winner of the best way to give observation to the large language model. The set of mark actually also works pretty well. The screenshot alone does not. And that's interesting because I still believe Open Interpreter, the way that they're actually interacting with computers is by screenshot. Now, if you're trying to deploy agents to a real world environment, consumers are not going to have OS world installed on their machines or expose OS world as an environment. So what we're probably going to have to do in the long run is build in two operating systems, a way for agents to interact with them more effectively. And one interesting insight that they had is higher screenshot resolution typically leads to improved performance. So if they're just doing screenshots, you could see right here the success rate and percentage increases as the resolution of that screenshot improves. So that's it. That is the OS World project. I really like it. I appreciate that it's going to allow us to benchmark agents. Testing and actually having results is the only way to improve anything. I'm thinking about actually setting up OS World on my own machine, testing it out. Maybe I'll create a tutorial from it. If you wanna see that, let me know in the comments below. If you liked this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.